Hi there everyone and welcome to this video. Today we are going to be covering the year-end process in uh, Business Central. So you would usually run through this process um, obviously after the year-end. Um, so once you've posted all your transactions for the prior fiscal year, um, you can run through the steps within the Business Central environment. Um, so a few things that we need to do here and I'm just going to start by talking through the um, first step which is the accounting periods page so I'm just going to search here for accounting periods and um, in the accounting periods page I guess it's self-explanatory but we basically have um, our accounting periods for our company um, listed here um, so there's a few um, sort of tick boxes here and uh, I'll just talk through those. So see we've got the new fiscal year which is sort of ticked for the first day of the new fiscal year. So here the um, fiscal year began on the 1st of Jan 2021 um, denoted by this tick box here and the next new fiscal year begins on the 1st of Jan 2022 um, in this system. Um, so we also have the closed and the date locked tick boxes so might not be coming through in the recording there but um, these are not user editable so I can't um, tick and untick these boxes um, out of the box anyway um, if we wanted to do that we could do uh, a modification which allows us to tick and untick those um, manually as a user if we want to um, so these two um, Tick boxes are populated when we run the close year um, routine, which we're going to do um, in a second. Um, and just finally here, we've got the inventory period closed um, tick box, which basically tells us that the inventory period is closed for that particular accounting period. So uh, in this particular company, I'm not using inventory periods, but that is one that we can cover in a uh, future video. So um, other things to mention here is um, we do also need to create a fiscal year. So I'll just run through closing a fiscal year first um, and then we can go about creating a new one. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is just on the accounting periods page, I'm going to hit the close year action up at the top here. And what this does is it gives me a bit of a notification here to say this function closes the fiscal year from the 1st of Jan 22 through to the 31st of December 22. Uh, goes on to tell me, I won't read the whole thing, that once it's closed it cannot be opened again. Um, so how does the system know to close this particular accounting period or fiscal year? If I just press no on this message, we can see here that the closed tick box is closed up until January 01, 2022, and it knows the next fiscal year begins January 01, 2023. So this is how the system can tell these are the periods, the dates which it needs to close. So let me say close year, and this time I will press yes, and you can see the closed and date locked checkboxes are now populated for our fiscal year 2022. So it's very simple, that's the first step that we need to complete. Um, optional next step here is you can create the next fiscal year, so you can see I've got fiscal year 23, 24, um, and I can go down to sort of the, um, the, the next period if I want to. If I want to create another fiscal year, I can just go into create year here, and I'm just going to change this because that doesn't look right let's say 0101 2025 I'm going to say the number of periods is 12 and the period length is one month so if I say okay um, I've just got a message um, so I didn't get a message I've just got a, a new fiscal year here from January 01 2025 through until January 01 2026 and I can do that as many times as I want to here um, so if I do that again, you see it's created the fiscal years up until 2027. So um, yeah, I guess um, you need to make sure that you've got the next fiscal year set up in this table. Um, when you close 
your previous fiscal year. Okay, so those are the two steps. So just to recap, we came into the accounting periods and we closed the fiscal year that we wanted to close. And as an optional step, we can create the next fiscal year if we want to as well. So let's jump back and move on to the next step here, which is the close um, income statement. Um, so this is um, a report, a batch job that we've got to run um, to effectively move all of the amounts from our income statement to our nominated retained earnings account. So this is the report that's going to help us do that. Um, so first things first here on the report request page, it tells us the fiscal year ending date is 31 12 22. Um, how it knows this is that it's picked up the last fiscal year that was closed. Um, so that's what we just did um, on the accounting periods page and that's why BC has selected this as the fiscal year ending date. So next thing we need to do is nominate a general journal template and general journal batch, um, which I'm going to choose general and I'm going to choose year end. So I've just created a year end journal batch here. Um, I guess it is good practice to pop this into its own specific batch, which you just use for year end um, sort of entries. Um, notice I don't have the copy VAT set up to journal lines populated um, on this particular journal batch. Um, it's quite important. So I'm going to press OK. Um, I'm going to put in a document number here. Um, so I usually just go YE 2022. You can choose anything you want to, but bear in mind it's good to keep that consistent over the years you know so for your reporting um, if you have um, a document number which is consistent you know you can go ye 22 3 4 5 6 etc um, just makes life easier when you're reporting um, so next year we've got a um, retained earnings account so I have one of those um, on my balance sheet. You may have a, a different account which you want to move the entries into. Just a case of selecting the account that we want to put our earnings into there. Um, and we've got a, a fairly new option here so we can post to our retained earnings account the um, balance or the details. Um, so this is to do um, with do we get a one line entry in our retained earnings account or do we get the detailed list of entries from our income statement to our retained earnings account? So it's just the way that the journal is generated. Uh, we also have a posting description. So this is what will be on the general ledger entries um, when we are generating the journal. And we do have a few other options here. So closed by um, business unit code by dimensions and inventory periods. So there's a, a few options there and uh, we'll just run the journal as it is right now um, and um, we'll delete the lines and then come back and do some other um, sort of options here and just show you how they look as well. Um, so I'm just gonna press okay for the moment and uh, I get a message here to say the journal lines have been successfully created. Um, and do bear in mind, I don't have any code mandatory dimension settings on my chart of accounts on this particular system. But if you did, um, you would get a bit of a message to say, do you want the system to account for that? It's a, a pretty cool bit of functionality there. Um, so let's say OK, and I'm going to go finance GL journals and into my year end journal batch. And we see my journal entries here. Um, so I've got the accounts from my income statement that have the values in there for fiscal year 2022. Um, and you can see here the final line on this journal is my nominated retained earnings account, so 60200, um, with the balancing amount in there. So key things on this journal you'll notice we've got our document number as we specified on the report request page on the close income statement uh, we've got our close income statement description again as we nominated on the close income statement batch job uh, the posting date is a specific date it's a c date as i like to call it in business central so it's uh, c31 12 22 
Um, and what I like to uh, sort of use to explain this is uh, think of C31 12 2022 as an imaginary date which is in between 31 12 2022 and 01 01 2023. So it's just a, an imaginary day which sits in between um, those two dates. And I guess why they do it this way is you can still use your um, accounting periods to report on entries within that period, but these are C or closing entries um, in Business Central. Um, and if I just scroll to the right hand side here, you'll notice in the department and customer group here, I don't have any dimensions um, because we didn't close our income statement by dimension. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm just going to delete these lines and I'm going to generate those again. Um, so you can safely delete. It's not going to sort of harm anything. Um, but if I go back now and run my close income statement again, this time we'll just do one thing differently. So I'm going to say post to my retained earnings account details. Okay, so everything else is going to say same but I'm just changing um, this option to details. And uh, let's just observe what that does. So if I go into my year end now, um, what we'll have is if I scroll to the right hand side, you'll notice here guys, now we don't have our retained earnings account on the bottom of the journal here. So it's not a single entry. What BC has done is it's posted it as a balancing account for each line and what this means is you will see each one of these detailed entries on GL account 60200 as opposed to a single entry in 60200 so effectively as as the um, option there defined we're seeing details in GL account 60200 so I guess how you want to do it there is up to you um, just showing you that we have the option and uh, just going to delete that again and I'm going to show you one other thing before we go ahead and post the journal. Let's go close income statement. Let's go balance YE 2022 and I'm going to select my department and customer group dimensions here. Um, so what this is effectively going to allow me to do, I mean, I can select all of my dimensions here if I want to, but this is going to generate entries on my income statement based on the dimensions that I select here. Um, and I can also do this by business unit code and by inventory periods. I won't show you those, but it's the same sort of principle as what we're using for um here for dimension. So if you use consolidation, you can do business unit code. If you use inventory periods, you can close by uh, inventory periods as well. And um, but this time, let me say OK. And again, it tells me journal lines have been successfully created. I'll say OK. And let me go into my journal batch. And what you'll notice is this time I've got a few more lines. So you can see I've got repeated account numbers here. So I've got three lines for 10200, a few lines for 20100, and I've got my, my final retained earnings line in here as well. Um, and now if I scroll to the right hand side here, guys, you'll notice that I've got some department code and customer group code. So all it's done, the amounts against each account would be the same. So we didn't we didn't compare that, but if I ran it with or without dimensions, the amounts being posted obviously would be the same but it's just been split out now because I said I wanted to close my income statement by dimension. So we don't have to do that. It's up to us, you know, reporting implications of doing that um, depends on how we want to handle um, the closing postings to our uh, general ledger. Okay, so I think we've been through a few variations now. I'm gonna go ahead and post this journal. I'm gonna say yes. And it basically tells me that the journal lines were successfully posted. Um, and that is that. So the year end process is now completed. So just to confirm the year end process in BC, we need to close the the uh, fiscal year that we're, um, that we're closing. We need to create the next fiscal year if we need to. We need to run the close income statement batch job and then we need to post the journal. So four steps there that you need to complete. Um, and once that is done, um, I can go into, for example, my general ledger entries and I can see 
my C date entries here. So I can either filter by posting date to say, show me those entries on C31 12, 2022. Um, or we also have a specific source code called close income statement, which will show you only your closing entries as well. So just a few different ways there to get back to your general ledger entries generated when you close income statement. Okay, so that about covers everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. I um, hope you found it useful. Uh, thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll see you on the next one.